how to use heat and bond adhesive. This is my go-to for raw edge applique. It is so easy. It makes a very difficult task into something super simple. And if you're working on a Dresden quilt that has a lot of blocks and you just want to, you know, get it done a little bit quicker, this is the method. Now, if you are planning on doing any kind of handwork, do not use this. Um, I have other video tutorials for things like that, but this stuff will make it very hard for you to do handwork. But if all you're going to do is make a Dresden plate and free motion quilt over it, this is the product for you. We do sell this by the yard. So if you need a little bit more than this, I think this is this is one and a quarter yards. If you need more than one and a quarter yards, you might want to buy it by the yard. But we have both available. All right, so let's learn how to use this. All right, so I have found this scrap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little piece of this. Now, if, if, if I'm working on, a, like, say, a Dresden quilt, uh, I'm probably going to leave this on the yardage, but I just had this tiny piece. Uh, normally, I would have taken my yardage, rolled it out a little bit, and then cut it to fit the scrap of fabric, that quarter, uh, quarter yard, whatever you're working with. All right, but what you want to do is you want to get, this is a scrap, so I'm putting the scrap right on top of it. Now, you've got two sides of this. You've got this bumpy or, or rough textured side, and then you've got this nice smooth paper side. You want to make sure that this and the back of your fabric are layered up together. So I've got top of fabric, back of fabric, bumpy side, smooth side because that bumpy side there is the glue okay so we put them together like that and then you grab your iron and then you just iron it um sometimes i will even flip it over and iron it this way all right so if you are making a dresden block like this you will now need to cut your circles all right, now if you are fussy cutting, say you're say you've got a little bird print going on, you might want to take, you know, one of these very expensive, nice rulers. I love them though. I know they're expensive, and kind of figure out where you want to cut like that. Uh, but again, these rulers are expensive. We have them in the shop if you're interested in them, and they do make fussy cutting a little bit easier. But I can almost do the same thing with different things around my house. Here is an embroidery hoop. Say my bird was right here, there I go, boom, done. Little bowl does the same thing. Now, sometimes it's easier, you know, to see things, you know, versus a bowl. You can't really see what you're cutting, or but you can with uh, an embroidery hoop. So there's different things around the house, but let's say that you've just got a solid situation like I have going on, and you just want to cut as much circles as you can for your Dresden centers. A situation like that, I might you know, either grab my ruler or grab my embroidery hoop. And then I just start doing this number, drawing my circles, fitting as many as I can, just like that. I think that's all I'm gonna be able to get. I'm gonna grab my fabric scissors. These are from Havels, by the way, and they are amazing. They cut all the way to the tip. That's why I like them so much. And then I just start cutting out my, my circle shape. right? I would go ahead and cut, you know, all of them out that I can get. And the Dresden quilts are especially great for using up, you know, little bits of scrap like this. So a great thing to, a great thing to ha ha use your scrap basket for. All right. So I would cut up all of them, obviously, but then I would sit here, peel this off, peel this paper off. It takes it just a second to get it going, but once you get it, it is there. All right, that is garbage. This is your sticker, basically. All right, so what you would do now is take, get this centered onto a Dresden plate. I know this one already has it center, but just for demo purposes. I would put it right here. I would use my iron and let this, you know, get, it'll stick to the top of this plate. All right, so this is not permanent, but it's going to feel pretty close to permanent if you're, you know, doing this number right here. You see it's not coming off. It's not even coming up a little bit. If I was to get in there and dig it out, I could get this thing off. So if you make a mistake, you can fix it. Um, but uh, 
if you wash your quilt without stitching on top of this, it's going to peel off when it comes out of the dryer. So you definitely want to eventually stitch this. Uh, I just usually save that step for when I'm quilting the quilt. When it's all done and we're doing our quilting, then I will make sure that I will stitch all the way around this raw edge and, you know, whatever, maybe with a swirl, maybe with, you know, diagonal lines or maybe maybe a grid. So however you want to do it, uh, you, you will eventually have to do that. But as far as the blocks, this is enough for right now. All right, so let me show you my... Another way to think about it, if you're not wanting to do circles, I have my Dresden Flower Center fabric. I've backed it with that heat and bond already. And then I just sit here and start cutting out the flower shape. I'm almost done. So same thing, but instead of just your, just your circle, I'm gonna have a flower for my Dresden plate. So there's a flower, works the same way. I peel off the stuff, I put it in the center of my plate, and voila, that's <laughs> so cute. <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, so there's that option too, if you uh, want to you know, get super creative. But if you're sitting there thinking, I have a scrap bin just full of fabrics, this is a great way to go too. So do as you please, whatever your heart desires, make it happen. Uh, it, it's really, really simple. Okay, so that is it for this demo. Um, if you're looking for all the links, they're right below this video. Thank you for watching.